Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is 10 o'clock and time for us to get started here today. Uh, you know I'm generally a camera on kind of guy, but today the focus of the show is Facebook and how it can help you maximize some of your um, advertising and some of your outreach potential this fall. So we're going to leave the focus there so you don't have to look at my ugly mug all morning. Uh, speaking of my ugly mug, I am Randy Lober, if we have not met yet. I am your growth marketing manager here at Action Benefits. And part of my job is, actually all of my job, is to help work with agents and find different ways to help you grow your book of business uh, so you can be successful in serving your clients. And what better time of year to do that than here in the middle of AEP and OEP? Uh, this session was a purposely purposefully planned for today, uh, because as you may have uh, heard, uh, the election is over, which means ad space is not being taken up by a lot of the advertisement that you're all probably sick of and your clients and prospects are probably sick of by now, uh, which means ad space is a little bit cheaper now to, uh, to deal with here today. Um, so, uh, if you're in the mood to strike while the iron is hot, so to speak, and get in on the fun and try and drive a few more leads your way during AEP or OEP, uh, you're in the right place. So let's get started talking about uh, what we want to accomplish here today. Um, the goal here is that we want to be able to create more leads that come uh, to you via a advertising campaign via uh, Facebook and by extension, Instagram. Uh, running your ads in one place will actually help you run your ads in one place. They run, or both places rather, they come across the meta platform. And I want to make clear, I guess, that there's a few under few prerequisites uh, that you need to have taken care of before this session really makes sense to you. We won't spend a lot of time with the prerequisites today, though I'm happy to help you out with them. Um, just let me know in the chat. Uh, or otherwise, if you'd like to spend some time, and we're ha happy to do that with you. First things first is before you can advertise on Facebook, you need to have created a personal Facebook account. Um, and that is because Facebook reduced the truth in advertising laws and needs to be able to link back to who is doing the advertising uh, based on the uh, you know jurisdiction that you're working in. Second thing you'll need to advertise is a company Facebook page. In this case, you see the uh, page for the retail branch of Action Benefits. Uh, this retail branch is really built to service customers uh, for particularly when agents exit the business. Uh, this retail branch comes in and you know serves and maintains the books that um, we take on when our partners leave the business or when they sell sell business to us. And that's really the purpose of the presence of the page you see here on your screen. So we've met those two requirements here. We have a personal page and we have a business page. And now we're in the business of trying to promote that page. If you look over here on the uh, left side of the screen, uh, there is a toolbar. <laughs> your professional dashboard, which gives you some insight into your leads and ad creation. You'll come back there for some reporting on your ads and how they've worked out a little bit later on. You'll see some insights about how your page in general is performing and what content, what, uh, whether they're advertisements or not, seem to be resonating with your audience. You'll see the ad center, which we'll go to here in just a moment, as well as a shortcut to creating ads, uh, which we'll spend some time with. You can also, from your Facebook page, boost an Instagram post and cross post between platforms here and work on some more settings and some additional uh, tools for you here. The Lead Center, for example, is a great place. Uh, if you choose to set up an ad that creates leads via a form here on Facebook, any lead you get is going to come straight to that place. And Meta Business Suite gives you a lot more tools to manage how you work on both platforms. Uh, not the express purpose of today's session, but happy to spend more time with anyone there should they want it. But you're here today because you want to advertise. You can use the blue big, uh, big blue button here to do so. You can use create ads or go in via the ad center. Any of the three will work. Uh, we'll go ahead and use the create ad button here today and be taken to a screen that looks like this. And this is how you know it's a live demo because you see things loading here in the background. 
Um, first thing we should talk about is the goal for your ad. Facebook is going to try and generate some goals or some automatic goals for you. Uh, and based on what it knows about your page and how you're interacting with the platform. But there are a few things we can do to kind of hone our audience and hone our results. So if, for example, we are interested in getting more hot phone calls, more calls in during our business hours, we can uh, tailor our campaign to look like that. And if we hover over the uh, information here, you'll see exactly what that looks like. If we want more website visitors, again, you can tailor your campaign to look a bit more like that on both Facebook and Instagram. Save for more leads, more site visits, more messages, page likes, or just a general promotion of your uh, business locally. Because we're here in the middle of AEP and because you probably want more people talking to you, but you also want to make sure you're compliant with CMS rules, we're going to actually use get more website visitors. Because the goal is, for this particular campaign we're going to set up is good to be drive people to our website so they complete the lead form on our page. The reason we, we may not want to choose um, get more leads here for a Medicare focused campaign is because uh, on occasion, Facebook will you know, use its AI magic to edit things for and on your behalf, but it doesn't always know what compliance looks like. So we know your website is most likely compliant. We're gonna go ahead and direct visitors there by using this too. Not to say that uh, get more leads is a bad option by any means, but it's better suited for campaigns that are not Medicare centric. So if we wanna get more website visitors, I'm gonna save that from here. And we want to uh, do a few things here. You see there's ad creative here, which is a description, and we can choose some media that we have uh, for these campaigns as well. Now, because we are interested here in getting more AEP or OEP leads, uh, particularly in this session, I'll, I'll walk through Medicare compliance because it's a little more hairy to get through, to be honest. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use things that are already approved by, by carriers. So before the session started, I went and downloaded and created some material in United Healthcare's portal. Honestly, all of the national carriers have pretty good materials for us to uh, take a look at and beg, borrow, and steal. And you know they're already approved by both CMS and that carrier, so it's okay to run with. Um, you'll see that pop up here on your screen and as we make adjustments here. So we know there's a video here that's going to play that we bought from United Healthcare. Speaking of that video, I want to uh, share some things, share something with you that came uh, what that looks like here. So pardon me while I change my screen for just a moment. Um, <clears throat> what United Healthcare does and uh, what Humana does, for example, very well is they make it really hard not to comply with CMS rules. Um, so they give you the video, right? If you go into their portal and you customize it uh, or download it here, they give you an option to download that video via a specific link. And I did that ahead of time. So uh, that was not to make you watch me click around all the time. But they also give you CMS compliant text uh, they, and uh, carrier approved text that you can use within your post. And they do warn you that the text you see here must be used verbatim. You cannot make any changes to it. So uh, you'll see here, I, if I copy this text, and I go back to our Facebook window. It's going to take a minute for me to switch back over to that window for you. All right, I can paste that text right here. And now I have a CMS compliant ad. And I'll wait for it to generate the, the preview up here. All right, and now I have updated text. I am going to correct some spacing here for you um, just to make it read a little bit better. And I should mention while that preview is generating that yes, uh, this ad does lead with United Healthcare. No bones about it. But when your clients call in or when your clients call in, that doesn't mean you're under, any under obligation to sell them United Healthcare, even though that 
might be what they're interested in. You can and should and must offer your full menu of products here. Uh, but we are looking here at, you know, kind of a simplified way to uh, lead with compliant material and not have to go through a bunch of uh, rigmarole to be able to talk directly, directly to prospects and clients. So that said, you are now looking at my screen here where you I see this updated ad. You see our text, you see the video here. If we were to scroll through here, it also shows you what it would look like in on Instagram and, and on Facebook Reels. And you'll see the video uh, you know, kind of slides in here for us as well. So we selected that media earlier. I have the option to choose a thumbnail. Uh, for that ad too. So if they're on a spot where they it's a, a static ad, they're not playing videos, uh, they can do that here. You'll see uh, the ad update over here as well. The headline you can do a few things with. Uh, not a bad idea to keep it as your agency name or as your business's page name because it helps build that brand recognition and can, uh, connect people to you. So I would always recommend doing that. Button label is what you'd want to uh, pay some attention to here as well. You can do a few things here. Uh, <clears throat> you can choose, you know, contact us, learn more, request a time, so on and so forth. Again, that varies based on what your the goal for your campaign is and what you want to do. Because I want people to, you know, learn more or con or contact us. Um, we'll have learn more here because we're actually directing them over to the website. Action Benefits Insurance Agency .com, or whatever your website happens to be. What is neat here, though, is as you scroll down, you can put an additional contact method in. So if somebody you know didn't want to go to your website, they wanted to instead call you right away because they love your ad so much, you have the option to do that here as well uh, by putting your phone number in uh, too. As I continue scrolling down the page, I'm going to see a few more options that uh, can help me out here with managing my Facebook ads. The first option here is Advantage Plus Creative. And what this option does is Facebook uses your ad performance to deliver different versions of the ad to people who um, might be more likely to interact with that. And generally speaking, if I were if I were advertising just my agency and not looking at advertising Medicare specific products, I would leave that on. But because I know I am advertising a medi for Medicare, I'm using carrier materials here, I have to use their text. I'm turning the slider off for this campaign because I don't want AI or anything else to, to get me in a spot where I won't be compliant. Um, so if you're using a general and so I guess the rule of thumb there is if you're doing some general advertising for your agency, not a bad idea to have it on, but because I'm specific to Medicare here, I'm taking that off. So I, I know I have uh, some guardrails for compliance safeguards here. Facebook may also ask you whether you are advertising about housing, because if so, there's some additional rules that come into play. We are not advertising about housing, so I don't need to toggle that switch on. And then, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the really fun part. But before I do that, I want to check in on the chat and Q&A, see if there's any questions you might have here for us. <laughs> Doesn't look like there's anything burning yet, but please feel free to keep those coming. Okay. On the audience, we have the opportunity to figure out who exactly it is we're going to share, show our ad to. Uh, are we going to show it just to people who are likely to be Medicare eligible? Are we going to show it to uh, a wide variety of people? Where are we going to? Where are people going to see my ad? Who do I want to interact with my business uh, via this ad? And we have some big decisions to make here. You can use the advantage audience. The advantage audience again, it kind of uses Facebook AI to figure out who's most likely to uh, take a look at your ad and put it in front of them. And that's kind of the easy button. If you do that, you do have the option to um, <clears throat> give it some parameters here. Uh, but we can also choose to uh, uh, develop an audience or look at people through targeting. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that, um, that method here because we want to be a little bit more 
uh, concrete, I guess, and specific on who we want to show this ad to, because there's only certain people, right, who can make uh, benefit changes during this time. So if I use the pencil button here, um, gender doesn't matter to me. I want to advertise to all genders here, but because I'm advertising to folks who are Medicare eligible, right, for AEP, I want to bring my age slider up and show this ad only to 65 plus. I should point out though, that uh, when you are advertising maybe off cycle, so outside of AEP, you can drop this, drop this down to 64 and advertise to folks who have a birthday coming up, right? So you'd get target agents to Medicare uh, there as well. Uh, and if you're interested in hearing more about that off season approach, we can spend some time with that a little bit later on too. But for this particular ad, because I'm telling people that AEP is ending soon and gosh darn it, I want them to call me now, we're going for 65 plus. I can choose locations. In this case, it defaults based to your business location plus 10 miles or the city your business is located in. But you can do some interesting things here with location as well. Uh, maybe for example, I, I, I snowbird or I, I have a, a business set up here in Orlando, I can also choose or, uh, to run the same ads in Orlando, plus or minus, you know, a few miles here, um, and have the, these campaign working for me in multiple areas or wherever it happens to be. Maybe if I know I want to focus in Southfield and uh, perhaps I want to take, maybe I spend some time up north, so I also want to take a look at Traverse City, I can either look at that uh, advertising area, or I can look do a few other things with that here as well. Um, lots of different ways you can slice and dice. You can do that at the county level. You can do that uh, however you like. Generally speaking, uh, especially if you are working to build your local presence, you'll want to keep it local. Um, but there's never any harm in you know pl playing with mileage here, expanding your radius, going to, uh, in and out here, seeing what you know what you catch. And we should mention that we do spend, I do spend some time uh, dealing with how to figure out what areas to advertise in. In another session, we'll probably run it again here in January or so, because that's when new census data gets released. But we can take a look at Census Business Builder and figure out, for example, where we are more likely to run into folks that are over 65, um, so on and so forth. In any case, we're going to leave this here, Southfield uh, plus 10 miles here for this range. And as we scroll down, we have some other options we can take a look at here to uh, do some more detailed targeting. And this is where Facebook uh, gets both powerful and creepy, depending on how you look at things. Because Facebook knows that uh, our, the, our retail agency works in Medicare, it um, recommend some topics for us, but we can also do some more detailed targeting here. And I wanna show you a few of what you can choose just to show you what's possible that might fit the variety of niches your business and clientele might fill. You can always go by demographics here, right? Um, these, are, these are the characteristics about people. So for example, you can uh, if you want to serve folks who are in undergrad, right? Maybe you have, a, and I know we're talking about Medicare here today, but maybe you have a college town nearby and you really want to get the attention of those college folks during or OEP and make sure they have coverage. That's a possibility here. You can look at certain income ranges. Um, so long as, you know, based on their income uh, relative to zip codes here in the United States. You can look at life events. So if somebody does have a birthday coming up, right, um, within the next few months, you can advertise to that. Or if you have friends of someone that has a birthday coming up, right, you can also advertise to those folks, uh, especially if you were looking to do kind of outside of AEP ad. You can look at relationship status, uh, uh, whether they're engaged or whether they're newlywed, whether they've recently moved might not be a bad audience to, to target here for this particular campaign because we can get some folks who might have an SEP. We can look at folks who are parents and advertise to them if we so choose. Um, relationships, work status, lots of different options you can choose there. 
but you can also take uh, take a look at interest here as well. Um, so are these people who are interested in fitness, is that a niche I'm carving out for my agency, right? So if someone um, is interested in physical exercise or physical fitness and has shown that via their Facebook activity, I can show, I can target them, right? And maybe speak to them a little bit with the ad, ads here. And again, you can target based on hobbies, activities, sports, what technology they're interested in, lots of different things there uh, you can take a look at. And you can also take a look at their user behaviors. So based on what they do in the platform and how they interact with Facebook, Meta, Instagram. So do they have an anniversary coming up? Uh, what be, uh, so Are they a mobile device user? So do you want to show this only to Android users or only to, to um, <clears throat> Facebook users, but not Instagram users? You can take a look at a lot of other things here as well, whether maybe they're expats or uh, other things, lots of different ways you can slice and dice that. But um, that being said, because I am really focused here on Medicare AEP, I kind of want to ca cast a broad net. So I just want to show this to anyone 65 and above because they probably have some decisions to make about uh, Medicare during this time period. You're welcome to add additional things here. Um, so maybe if I do want to introduce, you know, introduce people who are who are retirement age or retirement planning, that could be an option. Um, you'll have to kind of experiment a little bit to figure out what works in your area and what resonates. Uh, but we can keep this kind of broad here for now. As we continue to scroll down, we'll see um, some the opportunity to look at upcoming birthdays again for that uh, outside of AEP ad. It'll tell us how broad our audience is, whether we have a specific audience or a broad audience, and who exactly, it, how many folks exactly are in that audience. So how many people could we this ad be shown to? So based on what we said so far, we have looked for 65 plus in Southfield, uh, plus 10 miles. Uh, this ad could be shown to up to 150,000 people, which is a fairly a broad audience here, good potential for leads here. And what we can do from here is save that audience. So as we save that audience, everything we've done here gets saved. I, again, you're free to update that, change that as you like. We should also note that you can advertise only to people that uh, who like your page. So maybe if you are looking at from a retention basis and you already have folks who do like your Facebook page, you can target just to them, or you can target people who are like the people that already like your Facebook page, right? If you have a Facebook following, uh, you can, Facebook will try and target ads just to them. Or again, you can just show to people who are local to you. Lots of different options there. Um, but for this ad, we want to kind of, we're going to stick with this targeted approach here. You can also choose your duration. You can either choose to have ads run forever until the end of time, or you can choose a specific date this ad will end. Because this is an AEP ad and it warns them that AEP uh, will end soon, we are gonna choose the end date of December 7th here. So we've got 31 days left uh, of time here. All right. As we take a look down here, we have uh, a daily budget that we can choose for the event. Uh, for the event, we want to spend a little bit of time on this discussion here. Uh, it sets right now, or it's recommended amount of twenty dollars. It tells us that similar businesses spend seventeen dollars and get seventy-two clicks per day. It tells us that we're showing, if for twenty dollars, we're showing to between two point one to five point nine thousand accounts per day. We should, I should point out that Facebook, where it makes its money is as an advertising platform. So it is going to gear all of these numbers here to make you feel like you've got to put more money in to, to make this worthwhile. You can have success, and we've talked to agents and we've worked with agents that have, that's agents that have had success that work for as little as $5 a day. 
You can also, if you want, you know, to go hog wild, you can spend $200 a day um, for that for that account. And again, you'll see what their, uh, you know, their estimated reach for those ads would be and how many clicks you might be able to expect to expect for that here. You'll also get that budget updated for you here as well. If you're starting small, right, and you are looking to, um, you know, generate some traffic here, there's a few ways you can play it. You could run it for $5 a day through now through the end of AEP. Maybe if you want to see if this is worth your while, maybe you want to instead just run them for, uh, you know, the next week or so, but you want to maybe put yourself in front of a few more people during that week and get a few leads. The important thing is that um, as the campaign or as these leads do or don't work for you, you're always welcome to turn them on or off and always able to turn them on or off with a simple flick of a button behind the scenes. So if it gets to be too much and you're not seeing the return on the investment you'd like, you have that option available to you as well. For now, though, we'll, I say we want to do this easy and fairly cheap. We're going to run this through the end of AEP and run this at $5 a day, knowing that we can see, you know, 545 to you know 1,500 people will see my, this ad every day, and we should get some uh, traction from it here as well. And $455 through now to the end of AEP, now, uh, from now to the end of AEP, I can get that much more traffic to my website. When we talk about placements, um, we are talking about we uh, can let Facebook choose where to place our ads or we can choose to place them ourselves. Uh, if, for example, we wanted to um, choose whether we wanted to show this on Instagram or on Facebook Messenger, we can uh, you know, hide or show all of those. In this case, because we, I already know the content is compliant, I already know that you know how my image is going to look. It's probably okay, or it is okay rather to leave the advantage placements on. That way it's gonna show this ad wherever it can. The meta pixel we can talk about uh, for a few moments here. Facebook does give you, or meta rather, the parent company gives you the opportunity to create a tracking pixel you can put on your webpage. Gives you a little more information that, about how your ad is performing. Again, that's beyond the scope of today's uh, talk here today, but happy to spend some time with you one-on-one -on -one if you'd like. And then, of course, Facebook is going to ask you to pay for it with your um, with your designated method of payment. Uh, so that, ladies and gentlemen, if you take a look at your ad here, is uh, you're building an ad from top to bottom with a few pointers here along the way shows you what it's going to look like, shows you how many folks you're going to reach. Uh, you can also take a look at how this ad will look in a variety of places. So when we talk about placements, here's how that ad might look for you on Facebook eventually. So here's what it might look like as a Facebook post. Here's what it might look like here. It might come up as, as a suggested video for folks. Um, could come up in stories, lots of different places with it. And we know it's always got that compliant copy with us here and compliant demonstration here. So it's always worthwhile doing. All right, folks, seeing no questions here at the moment, um, I do wanna thank you all for your time and attention here today. I always enjoy spending time with you. Should you have any questions about how to uh, set up your first campaign or where to find compliant materials or anything else, Always happy to, to take your calls, take your emails about what comes uh, next for you. Or if you wanted to you know, discuss what it would take to launch a campaign outside of AEP, OEP, and kind of drive business into you throughout the year, happy to have that conversation as well. On behalf of everyone here at Action Benefits, I do wish you a successful AEP and OEP and a great finish to your day. Please let us know if you have any questions and whatever we can do to help. I will be there for you. Thank you for your time.